I'm Jason Carter. Physical optimization defines my life. The day I was born, doctors nearly killed me with medical malpractice. They said I'd never walk. I've been proving them wrong for 35 years. It's easier than you think to obtain super optimal health. I've devoted my life to it, and with my help, you can too. I'm Jason Carter, and this is Enzyme Mental. And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to tell you about the micro minerals, also known as trace minerals. These trace minerals you need just a tiny bit of, so hence the micro part, obviously. And even though you need a tiny amount every day, they are critical and essential. And the diminishing amounts of these minerals in our soil is causing most people to theorize that this might be a primary cause of many health problems today. And the trace minerals are often the most neglected minerals in most multivitamins, which means that most multivitamin companies actually don't put very many trace minerals or any at all in their product. So here's a look at the micro minerals, otherwise known as the primary trace minerals. There's actually 72 trace minerals, but these are the most critical ones. Iron is a part of hemoglobin, which is found in your red blood cells, and it's needed to carry oxygen to the rest of the body. Iron is important, of course, but you can always overdo it. Women who are menstruating often need iron supplementation. I wouldn't really recommend it for postmenopausal women or men, because men often have several times the amount of iron women have stored up, and neither men or women have any real natural way of getting rid of excess levels of iron. One of the easiest ways to drop your iron levels levels in the blood that most people consider is donating blood to a blood bank because that will actually reduce the iron in your blood very quickly obviously but you need to be careful if you're going to do that zinc is a powerful antioxidant mineral that is very beneficial to the immune system zinc is mainly found in meats and fish and most multivitamins contain at least 15 milligrams and if you feel like a cold or flu is coming on, you might actually want to go higher. I've even heard that one sign that your body gives you that you have a zinc deficiency is if you notice that your sense of taste and smell is not really what it used to be. That's kind of a sign that your zinc levels are getting quite low. So zinc can be taken any time of year, but it does seem to be quite popular around cold and flu season, around the winter time. Iodine is yet another of your micro minerals or trace minerals. And if asked about the importance of iodine, most people think of your thyroid. And a very common thyroid disease is Hashimoto's syndrome, also known as Hashimoto's thyroidosis, which is an autoimmune disease. And in this capacity, Hashimoto's does not respond well to iodine supplementation. In fact, excess iodine can make it worse. So try to get your iodine from your diet, and it's very rich in things like seaweed and kelp. And you could take it as a supplement, but I would keep your doctor in the loop on how you're taking iodine, because you could always take too much of this mineral also, even though you do need it. Selenium is also a critical mineral, and studies have shown that populations who get a lot of selenium tend to have much lower rates of cancer, which doesn't prove anything by itself, of course, but it is worth noting. Selenium is believed to help chelate toxic compounds like mercury, and selenium is another of these minerals that is rapidly diminishing in the soil. So you can get a great dose of selenium in a food form just by eating three Brazil nuts every day. So it's really not that hard to find. Selenium Selenium also works well when paired with iodine because it helps to protect the thyroid if you happen to take a little bit too much iodine. Copper is yet another of our microminerals, and copper is found in a range of foods, including nuts, seeds, legumes, and even water. We need copper, but more is definitely not better. Copper has a synergistic effect with zinc and is elevated in a number of conditions. So, unless a health practitioner has recommended copper supplementation, try to go with a copper-free multiple. Copper overload may be much more dangerous than we first thought. A really great source of copper, however, is chlorophyll. And I've talked to you about chlorophyll in regards to energy production. So that's a really great safe way to consume copper every day. If you're doing concentrated chlorophyll diluted in water, that's a good way to get more chlorophyll and it will give you some energy. And it's a decent low dose of copper that you can take every day. And like I said, taking it in conjunction with zinc has a real balancing effect on the body. So try to take it like that. And I've seen many zinc supplement preparations with a small amount of copper added to it. 
Manganese is an important part of many enzymes, and enzymes are critical in your metabolic machinery. Manganese is readily available from food, especially plant foods, so most people don't really need to supplement, and many multis actually have a decent amount of manganese in their formulas, so no real need to take any additional manganese. Chromium, this is something I've definitely talked to you about in regards to blood sugar and also eradicating sugar cravings. Chromium enhances the action of insulin, which helps you get sugar out of your bloodstream, like I've told you many times, and into your cells. In this way, chromium works much like certain insulin sensitizing medications, like glucophage, which is popularly regarded as metformin. It helps to open the doors of the cells so that insulin and sugar can get in, reducing the burden of high amounts of both blood sugar and insulin. Research on chromium supplementation, particularly for diabetics, is very mixed, but chromium definitely has a place in carbohydrate insulin metabolism. Many people have gotten good results with supplementation of 200 to 500 micrograms per day. And there are some food sources of, of chromium, but they're pretty low, so try to get it from supplementation. Molybdenum is known as a detoxifier because it helps to cleanse the body of toxins, the accumulation of which contributes to a host of conditions. It's also an essential part of some very important enzymes. Most folks don't need a standalone supplement of molybdenum, which is found in decent amounts in legumes, greens, and other foods. But if you're eating too much sugar, like I did for far too many years, this can actually deplete your molybdenum stores. Silicon helps with the maintenance and flexibility of bones and joints and makes connective tissue stronger. When it's oxidized, like when oxygen molecule attaches to it, it becomes silica, which is now widely called the beauty mineral because of its positive effects on nails, hair, and skin elasticity. Silica also has a lot of internal benefits like boosting immunity and supporting arterial health. Silicon is found in wine, beer, raisins, and a lot of cereals, and you also find it very richly in organ meats. And finally, in this list of microminerals, boron is a very neglected trace mineral for which there is still no recommended daily allowance. Even though boron seems to be a nutritional powerhouse, as it's essential to countless metabolic operations. Primarily, it plays a key role in making strong bones, but it's also helpful for wound healing, boosting vitamin D levels, and the regulation of sex hormones. And one of the best food sources of boron is raisins, although it's widely available as a supplement too. So that's a look at your primary microminerals, also known as your trace minerals. They're pretty easy to find in supplement form. I would try to take them all together like a trace mineral complex because they do seem to work best when you take them all at once, much like the B vitamins also. And the best way to take them, even though they come in capsules, tablets, and chewables, and gummies, and liquid, is I would just add some liquid drops of trace minerals to my water and try doing that every day. And what you might likely feel with additional trace minerals is that you have a lot less joint pain and muscle pain and stiffness. You might have some better mental clarity, and you might even have some more energy throughout the day. This is a good sign that you are achieving proper mineral balance, which is something all of us need to do every day. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.